Welcome to the Tarpon Spring Sustainability Committee. And it is January 19th, 2023. And we're going to call this meeting to order. We have a roll call, Robin. Ms. Reeves. Yes. Chairperson Denise Menino. Here. Member Carol Mickett. Member Taylor Mandalu. Here. Member Dory Larson. Present. Member Karen Gallagher. Here. Member Robin Sanger. Here. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> Should I say it again? Well, mm -hmm. just, just Carol. <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, we're, we're doing roll call. Oh, we're having roll call. And you are present. And member Jennifer Bracey. Um, do we, can we have a motion to excuse Jennifer Bracey's absence? I move that we excuse Jennifer Bracey's absence. Second. Do we need to vote? And uh, let's, can we vote in favor of that motion? <clears throat> Aye. 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 Sorry. <laughs> so has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from November 18th, 2021? Mm-hmm. And are there any amendments or um, at all to the minutes that you've read? I wasn't here, so I can't really okay. address it. So we have a motion to approve the minutes from November 18th, 2021. Motion to approve the November 18th, 2021 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, the minutes for December 15th, 2022, um, everybody has expressed that they've been able to read them and look at them. So my only, um, my only amendment would be that we did try to start the meeting at six o'clock, but we waited to okay. have uh, an additional member. Right, okay. So if we could note that, because I really, punctuality is important to me. Okay, sure. Thank you. So okay. um, one of the items in our packet that Robin sent was a description of the committee and in that committee it said to have a quorum there had to be three regular members present and there were only two at, at the last meeting so um the alternate will count as a member during that it instance. didn't say that oh, well i checked with the clerk's office before oh you the did meeting, so that i knew okay. that we it was okay. going to be iffy whether or not we had a quorum so Okay. Yeah, I did go over that with them ahead of time. So can we get a motion to approve our minutes? I just wanted to check um, because when I was watching the minutes online, the date was mislabeled. So I don't know if that, it wouldn't be necessarily the minutes, but just to correct it. Yeah, on the YouTube channel. It says that the meeting was December 15th of 2023. So I don't oh, okay. just want to make sure that that gets corrected, but not necessarily with the minutes themselves. Motion to approve the December 15th, 2022 minutes. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And it doesn't appear that we have any public comments this evening, but we do have a very full agenda. So our next item would be um, a follow-up from last month. We postponed the vote for chairperson and vice chair due to the low attendance. So um, we're going to open that up now. Can I just pop in real quick? Mm -hmm. um, I was not here for the last meeting, but I watched it live while you guys were here. Am I allowed to approve 
uh, the second a motion to approve them if I was not physically here present for the meeting? I believe any committee member could approve the minutes. I mean, that's I my not, understanding. That's why I, I didn't second check. it. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, so I don't know if we need to. I can double check with that's the clerk's why I office didn't vote. just to make okay. sure. Because I wasn't here. So. Yeah, I mean, I was able to sit at home. I and love that. Watch it. You're, you're very precise. About well, I know. As soon as I did that, I was there. like, I read that, and mm -hmm. having watched the meeting while you guys were okay. doing this, I just was not participating mm -hmm. or physically here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I did second that motion. But if I need to rescind that, and we need to wait and for clarification mm -hmm. on whether or not I'm able to do that. Yeah, I'll follow up with Check the with clerks that. just to make sure that that was all right. Yeah, just I know there me. were several members who That's were a good not point. at the last <laughs> meeting. Yeah, you can. I mean, I suppose, Robin, you can because as the alternate, you were sitting in as a uh -huh. member. But I can't vote at this meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's a book about that. It's called <laughs> Catch Something or Other. Uh, you want a couple of us to step outside? <laughs> <and vote? laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, if, Robin, if you don't mind checking up on that, that would, and um, if, if I'm fine then that's fine if not we yeah, need to figure out another way to approve those minutes sure Thanks. okay so here I'm just back section 8 number F it says a quorum for the conduct of business shall not be be not less than three regular and alternate members right so it's all regular and alternate so as long oh as we I have see enough so that's how to there. read it yes it says it's ambiguous because it looks like three regular. Okay, got it. So I just wanted to make sure that we that's were always on good the up to and make up. sure. So will we need to backtrack if this is not approved? <laughs> right. If, <laughs> it, if it's if it's <laughs> if it's, <laughs> if it's not, then I'll bring it minutes. forward to the in the next meeting agenda. Because the only two that could vote would would be um, Taylor and and Robin Sanger. Right. Yeah, I'll check up on it. Okay. Yeah. Give an update. Thank you so much. I appreciate this <laughs> education and training Sorry and that. action. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Robin? And also, that's an interesting point. So I was voting in the last meeting, and I was there, but this one, I can't approve those minutes, but the right. people who weren't at that meeting right. can vote on it. It just seems kind of weird. Yeah. It does, because we have no way of really knowing if it's accurate. You watched well, it. I watched the video, so, too. Watched it live. watched it after. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, I read those and was like, yep, I'm, I'm good with them. That's mm -hmm. what I remember, you know, okay. having been done, mm -hmm. but not physically being present. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes a difference. So mm -hmm. can we hold off on approving those? Can we go back? Can I make a motion to hold off approving the December 15th? minutes until we have a legitimate answer i'm not sure <laughs> uh, procedurally i'm not sure okay. i think m maybe <laughs> i think we should just proceed and then mm -hmm. if we need to go back we can next month okay. that's a good idea thank you so item three vote for chairperson and vice chairperson I'm not sure how the process works, but are there any nominations? Is that is that the question to ask? So I'd like to nominate Denise for chairperson. Looks like by default that might be <laughs> that might be me. What do you know? Well, you're is doing there anybody? A good... uh, it, well, it was because Dory was gone last yeah, month. Yeah, you're and... doing a good job. Oh well, thank you. I, you look good in that seat. Thanks. <laughs> That's a... Or a natural. <laughs> Do we have to second that? Or? I would think that we need a second motion. I'll second that. And um, a consensus? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now, um, we were open in the nominations for the vice chairperson for the Sustainability Committee. Am I allowed to nominate people as an alternate or do I just have to like wait till other people are gone before I do anything? Um, that's a good question. I, I think it might be re regular members. Um, yeah. I think maybe to be safe. All right. 
I wasn't going to just jump in, but I was just wondering. Well, you're allowed to, you know, express your opinion on who you think should That's be. That's right. It says chairperson. in the, the, the description that you may say whatever you want. Well, that's very kind. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very kind approach. Let's just committed. continue the way okay. that we've been. Okay. <laughs> so you can voice your opinion. Can I nominate? But it's not mandatory, uh, so you don't need to stare at I me until I say again. something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I would like to nominate Karen Gallagher. Well, I appreciate that, but I have to decline. So thank you. Okay. Oh, I was going to second that. Thank you. Not me. I mean, I would be willing to nominate myself to do it. I, I, my my concern with chair was my consistent being at enough meetings. Mm -hmm. But if well, you I will, know, I will nominate as a step you, in, then okay, I will nominate you for chair, vice chair. I second. In my opinion, that's a really good idea. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. <laughs> Dory, I just. I have to take a moment to thank you for all of the groundwork that you've laid in the last three years. It's been the hardest part. So I'm stepping in at a e much easier moment. And um, I don't think that we could have had a better chairperson for the city thank you. in this time. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have a question, yes. chairperson. Yes. Um, so given the sunshine laws, if Denise wants to talk to Dory and get, you know, mentored or advice about how to do things, is she allowed to do that? Um, I believe she would have to go through the clerk's office for that, that that would be advisable to go to them for mentoring. Um, but I'll look into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as they don't discuss things that we're going to vote on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might, it might be possible. Right. Because you might want it would be, some. It would be really helpful. One day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give false information, so I'll, I will look into it. Thank you very much. We're moving on now to um, the discussion on the sustainability plan outline, which I think this is an incredibly exciting moment that we finally reached in the time that we've been together. And Robin has prepared a beautiful outline. Mm -hmm. And she is going to present that for us. Yeah. And hopefully everybody has had a chance to take a look at it. So, <clears throat> as you may have noticed for this item, I had a couple different documents. One was the actual outline itself, and then a couple extra things. Um, so we can just start with the general outline. I don't know if y'all can read this. So as you know, we had settled on the title of the plan being Sustainable Tarpon Springs back last February or March off the top of my head, I'm not sure which one, but a little while ago as Sustainable Tarpon Springs. So for the outline, um, this was inspired by our conversations that we've had in this group, my conversations with staff and our sustainability staff team, and then also looking at relevant sustainability plans that we have reviewed as a group like um, City of Dunedin, um, City of St. Pete, City of Largo. So starting out just with a nice cover page, the sustainability plan at a glance, the intention for that is like a one pager that basically summarizes the whole plan uh, right off the bat. And we can also distribute that as a flyer. Um, then our table of contents, a message from a city manager or mayor, I'm not sure yet who that will be from, <coughs> contributors, um, executive summary, that'll be a little bit more um, detailed than that sustainability plan at a glance document. 
to kind of summarize this whole uh, large plan. Then an introduction, a guide for reading the document, and that's one of the sample pages I sent, and I'll scroll to that. But basically just explaining how things are broken down into the sections and the action categories that we have settled on. Um, then the sustainability progress to date would be giving information about sustainability initiatives that the city has taken in recent years and some of our progress that we've already made in this area. Um, then community engagement that will be summarizing that engagement that we collected from the workshops and the survey, talking about the events that we attended um, this past year and um, that we have ongoing now. Then kind of the real bulk of the plan would be the three main sections. This is where all of the actions will be, the environment, um, and then you can see how it's broken down, natural environment, climate, and energy fit best with that pillar, economy and built environment and local economy fit well with that pillar, and then social um, and equity and community health and safety fit well with that pillar. Mm. Then our um, time and cost estimates, this will be like a table that shows approximately how costly each action would be and how much time each would be, if it's like a long-term action or short-term action. And that will be used for phases for implementation to help determine which actions should be uh, paired and completed in which years. Then a list of abbreviations and definitions for anyone you know, reading the plan who um, may not know what all of these terms mean or what these abbreviations stand for. And then our appendix, which has lots of other good stuff, um, like those actions that were not included as the main actions in the plan, um, supplemental materials from survey and public workshops, more information about um, the public engagement that was conducted and maybe some of those tables and um, if needed, more, if we need more space to talk about, you know, current initiatives that would go in the appendix. Greenhouse gas inventory executive summary could go here. And then also the strategic plan, not the whole thing, but just the main um, mission, strategic themes, goals, and objectives to really show how these plans tie into one another. Um, and then these are estimated page counts to try to keep hmm. it a reasonable size for a plan. And off the top of my head, I counted it up earlier. I think it was around 53, 54 pages for the plan itself, and then another 50 or so pages of appendix. So are there any questions or thoughts on this? Um, thank you. This is like just very concise. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it makes a lot of sense. Like the, the mm -hmm. seeing it laid out like this because it's overwhelming, and we, as we all know, mm -hmm. the whole task. Can you go over uh, number nine, sustainability progress to date? When um, what will that include? Because that's going to be evolving. So if this is a, a sustainability action plan, and we just put to date when it's in print within the first six months, hopefully we'd have more. So it becomes very dated very quickly? Or is there something else that, is there something, part of that that I'm missing? Mm. So I think, yeah, there's, there's definitely a good point there. Um, some of these things I think will not necessarily be dated, depending on the way we frame it. Like for instance, saying that we have started, you know, acquiring EV chargers in the city. So we don't necessarily, it, we can frame it in such a way that we've started fleet electrification efforts and then use the annual report period as a time to give an update on progress in these different areas. And then um, at the five-year major revision point, we can, you know, reassess. And if things are too old or too dated, we can, you know, totally change this section. So I think that was the mentality. 
Um, and then some, some things they will still, you know, have longev longevity to that point. Like for instance, our solar installations, mm -hmm. they'll still be there in five years. Yeah, I just look at somebody picking it up at, at year four and looking, saying, that's it? That's it. <laughs> because it, 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 it yeah. you know, it's... Yeah, I was, I I was thinking of it more of like a history lesson of like, this is kind of what led up to the creation of this plan and this is what we've done to date. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm wrong. But that's the way that I was reading okay. it. it was like I looked a, at it as like, this is, this is what the city has done to date. And so when you read it a year or two later, hopefully the city we as a city have done more than what we did two years prior. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I think, I think Robin's right. The way it's worded mm -hmm. is going to dictate what that number nine means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since this will be online, isn't there a way we can, you know, have a supplement um, and add that to it um, and have it there like, you know, 2024 um, accomplishments, 2025. So there's a, no reason we can't amend it. I don't, I, I think, if, I would think that if you open it up for amendment, you open up the whole document for amendment. So I think the whole idea is the five year revision. But I, I don't think you're constantly, like, this is a working document until we mm -hmm. actually make it our finalized document. Am mm -hmm. I wrong? I don't know. And, and so I think tr trying to amend it on a, a yearly basis to, I don't say it defeats I don't think that that, that would be possible. Mm. Well, maybe amends the wrong word. We could just put a, you know, if it's online, wherever it is online, we can put <coughs> another document you. there that just acknowledges what's been accomplished and it's a separate document. It's like a supplement or something. I mean, people do that right. all the time Robin. without amending it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I, I'm thinking about just rewording that number nine to where it says initial steps towards sustainability, something like that, where it's just mm. people think, you know, here's five things we've done initially. Mm. It doesn't have promise of more. Right. That's a good idea. And to, <clears throat> and to update, we could, uh, don't we have like a yearly um, website update window or was it like six months so we could add things that we've completed there until mm -hmm. we hit that five year mark? That's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to update. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like when we do the progress report to the BOC, yeah. we could oh, do like a update. progress <clears throat> update of where we are. Yeah. It's always going to be a work in progress. I mean, mm -hmm. from from the time that it's, begun to be written. I mean, it's always going to be moving, mm -hmm. moving forward and expanding and changing. So we will have to have something in print that's established for that five-year period, but there might be other options for um, expressing what the, the um, work in progress is mm -hmm. and the ongoing thoughts about mm -hmm. which areas. and, and constant invitations to get input from the public mm -hmm. if that's possible because that's uh, to me really big priority mm -hmm. and to engage the public yes yeah. to get to get, get uh, ownership of yeah. this experience yeah so are there any other comments on the outline we had talked um, at one point of kind of modeling um, a graphic after each category, to each of the topics, um, but that shows like, here, let me get an example. Okay. In the St. Petersburg um, plan. And at one point, Paul had made uh, a graph like this. So it shows like, the action, the type of action, the estimated cost, the time frame, um, and then who's responsible within the city, and then who are partners, and then how it crosses over with or overlaps with other mm -hmm. uh, of the mm -hmm. categories. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if there's still intent to include um, 
kind of like the the point people for taking the actions. Yeah, so that would be under the section 14. That's basically what that section will be, similar to what you showed. Perfect. It might not look exactly the same because that is yeah. like a star specific to star framework, but it will be very similar to that. Okay. And I will scroll down like through some of the other. Um, this was our updated actions list. Um, not too much difference from the last meeting when we reviewed this, but um, we are down to 50 actions now. So a couple more actions were combined. Nothing was taken out. So I don't know if you all had any comments on this. Carol has a question. Okay. Um, I went through it, and so I have comments on it. A lot of them are grammatical things. Oh, okay. But also, and this was also a comment on the the other document you sent. Um, the one that has goal and on it. The, with the pictures? Uh, um, the sample pages? Yes. So if you scroll, and this will relate to this. So when you go down to, well, I have a comment about the goal, and I'll just give that to you, because I think the goal should be somewhat just re reframed, and I think there sh should be a distinction between the goal and what's the method which is under it. Because when I first read it, I thought that whole thing was the goal, but really the goal's the first thing. And I just changed it to create a sustainable future for Tarpon Springs by improving the city's environmental, social, and economic vitality. Because the goal really is to create a sustainable future for Tarpon Springs. But I'll give this all to you. But if you scroll down a little further, just to action categories, and also, okay, so you have them in a certain order here. Built environment, local economy. Okay, and then if you go to the description, which is right below it, keep going. Okay, you have built environment, local economy, equity. And then when we look at those actions that you had, they're not in that order. And if you go to the next place, it's environment, right? Mm -hmm. Section one. Section one, environment. And then you have the first thing is um, natural environment, which on your list is the last thing. Mm -hmm. So my request is just to have consistency mm -hmm. in the order in which you put all these things. Because yes. when you have those actions, which are up atop the list, they're all mixed up. And in here, I didn't understand why this is a sample. Why it was started with action four? So these are just some example pages. This okay. is not finalized. Okay. And actually, the sustainability staff team also reviewed this, and they had the same comments. So okay. well, I have oh. since uh -huh. reorganized in exactly the okay. way that you are suggesting. And I will give this to you because it's comments about grammar and just okay. commas <laughs> yeah, and sure. stuff like that. <laughs> no no need to go that. through it. Okay. And, you. you know, I would agree with everything that Carol is um, saying about the order, and I think that you've heard that, it sounds like, and this was just a test, <laughs> just a test. Um, at the same time, we had things that as we were going through the STAR framework that we put as priorities, and they're not necessarily coming out in that order. Do we still have a list? Mm of that, I think that we chose definite priorities, natural environment. I mean, we, I, the way that this looks is more like the STAR framework order, but we didn't emulate that. 
we made our own, we had our own set of priorities. And I know that we have a list of that somewhere where we, we organized them according to what we thought was most important for Tarpon, for Tarpon Springs. The way that I remember it, the, we, we prioritized what we personally thought we wanted to, just so that we could get through the nine goal areas. Right. Um, <clears throat> but then you can't really have a goal area be a priority over another goal area. But the action items we did, we prioritized them so that we could find the highest alignment mm -hmm. amongst our group so that we could say, so we could narrow it down, right? So we right. could select some for sure and, and delete some. So um, I think that where we're at now though, for the implementation, we're gonna have to do a whole nother process where we look at these 50 and decide which ones we start taking action on first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that that needs to be in the, like in the, document in any particular order of our priorities because right I mean we're gonna have to when we start looking at implementation we're gonna have to do a whole nother mm -hmm. round mm -hmm. of which actions we're working on first and it's gonna be based also on factors that we didn't really consider like cost and mm -hmm. all of you know mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a, a good point um, and I agree like the order of the implementation will be different than necessarily the order in which it's initially listed in, in the plan. Uh, but I will say that this order up here is what has been suggested by staff. So starting with environment, then economy and social, not necessarily, you know, it's not to say that one thing is more important than another, but the mindset was more so people tend to associate with sustainability with environment. So that seeing that first might make them feel more comfortable when looking at the plan and so that was kind of the thought for having environment first. And then um, similarly, economy kind of transitions well from environment with the built environment section, which ties in really well to that first section of environment. So it was about that flow, which is why we suggested in this order. Um, even though I have these, these um, suggestions, I want to say that it was very clearly written and it was easy to read. And I, I just want to acknowledge you for the work that you've done and how you've put this together. Thank you, I appreciate that. So I had one small comment and I know it's still in the planning phase, but um, it's like this big. Um, the symbols for each area um, I like them but maybe like a little bit more kind of like um, in the star framework where the colors are different just to kind of when if, if we <clears throat> if we end up putting like a chart in there it'll be easier to tell uh, which is that's a good point. being affected that's, I like that too. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point like I don't know if you if you have Photoshop and can just like <laughs> change it to red I can certainly try. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks great. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, it's still a work in progress, but I just wanted to give you all a little bit more than just the bare outline so you can mm -hmm. see. Thank you. <laughs> it's in the works. Mm -hmm. So um, then the next step um, after this outline and the next few months, I will be bringing the first draft of the plan. Hmm. And I don't know if there was anything else um, to show for this item, but I just want to make sure. No, I think that was the end of this item. I did um, want to share with you all, um, Jennifer Bracey uh, sent some comments, so I wanted to share those with you. Um, her first comment uh, was asking um, that annual... KPIs be included in the one pager to accompany the plan. So KPIs being key performance indicators or key performance metrics to kind of measure um, your successes. So that was one of her suggestions. Um, Could you repeat that, Robin? I'm sorry. Uh, she suggested having 
annual KPIs, uh, or K performance, key performance indicators, in the one-pager document to accompany the plan. So that was our first Can suggestion. Can you explain exactly what that means? Yes, that's what I was going to ask. What does that mean? So it would be, um, I'm trying to think of an example. It would be like, for instance, um, one of your key performance indicators for the climate and energy section might be acquiring a certain number of electric uh, charging stations. So okay. it might be like acquire 15 EV charging stations by 2025 or, um, you know, establish. It's kind of like what we're doing in the actions themselves, but um, having that, a couple of them identified in that actual handout itself. So like this is my understanding goals? of her suggestion. Is that the idea? Isn't it, it's more like benchmarks, right? right? So That's we're able to benchmark like how we have done. Mm -hmm. It's more quantifiable, you it's know, a, in okay. a hard, uh, in a more mm -hmm. uh, direct way. Um, Thanks. Do we have to have those set in advance, though, right? We, ha we, we have to figure out what our goals are. So that's like another whole component layer of this document is right. to, to embed those goals in there so we'll know what we're, do we, you know, do we have, a, so we have to figure out what key performance indicators we would like in there and what that span would be and then yearly see how we're, we're measuring up to that? Is that right? My and that, is? that would be the challenge now is a lot of our actions are about figuring out what we want our indicators to be. Yeah. So this might not be something that we can put in there right away, but it's always something we could add in later when we get to that point, like maybe with our annual update or our five-year revision. Was she but looking at the star? Um, I believe she her, was, because her, uh, based on her next comment. Um, but if too. you're, the thing you're suggesting that we do it annually is the same issue we have in terms of stating what has been accomplished. So I guess we need to connect it with this, a annual update or a something to say what we've accomplished and also what the goals we're setting mm -hmm. each year. Right. So the goal of the annual update is to kind of be a progress report mm -hmm. um, every okay. year to show like what we did towards the actions in that given okay. year. So if, you know, we have 10 actions in year one that we are supposed to work towards, it would be reporting, you know, how we did on um, working toward those 10 actions. And we could have, you know, different sections. We haven't really set up the format, obviously, yet for what that annual report could look like, but it could, that might be, you know, a way to talk about some uh, key performance indicators if we choose to do that. And you did mm -hmm. say that um, Jennifer referenced the star rating? Um, I'm, I can't say for sure. I'm just assuming because um, her next uh, comment was, uh, regarding STAR framework, I have worked on sustainability plans that have an appendix that maps the reporting formats to their report. For example, if you meet some elements but not all elements of a reporting format, you can choose which of those to map in an appendix, um, which I think what she is referring to is talking about um, different sustainability plan um, frameworks have reporting requirements. So I think she's kind of referencing the STAR reporting requirements, which isn't really as applicable to us now that we are moving away from STAR. But um, I mean, we could look at that maybe to inspire our own annual reporting, how we think it should look. And then lastly, she said, I think the outline of the content for the plan looks robust and covers the key areas we want to cover. Good. So this idea about having like benchmarks, like what we want to accomplish, there is an 18 climate and energy, you know, adopt official greenhouse gas emission reduction, such as 30% reduction by 2030, 
So I think it connected with what Robin was saying. I think it is a good idea in some of these to put in some specific goals because they are sort of general recommendations and it might be good to have details that can be quantified well, in I, some of them. I think that we, we kind of steered away from the rating, star rating or buying into the lead because of the to get accredited, there was a lot of there were a lot of hoops that you had to mm -hmm. jump through, but that's not to say that we shouldn't set um, very um, definite goals for mm -hmm. ourselves. I think that if we if we don't have something that we're we're evaluating our own progress by, mm -hmm. it's really easy to let things slide. I think so too. So we have to maybe perhaps talk to staff and get some feedback on that because we didn't buy into either one of the systems of being an accredited city because of a, for a lot of reasons you know it was very cumbersome for the size of our city and it was expensive there were there was a there were um, a lot of points that I think that we discussed that didn't seem to work for us and yet we definitely I hear what Jennifer's saying and I'm really feeling like we need to have some way of measuring our own progress mm -hmm. in a real tangible form so I don't know how that would happen but it would be nice to have staff give some feedback on that and how they do that for themselves so all of these have been reviewed with staff you know after every time we review here we review every month with staff so staff has been very involved in this whole process and this is kind of the framing that um, they're comfortable with I think for a lot of these actions um, it's it's more than just like setting a target it would take you know months of research in some of these areas and bringing in consultants to really get to the best target or decision so it's kind of in the spirit of getting our plan done quickly, but in the best way possible, so that you know when we are working on these actions specifically, then we can give that time that's needed to get to those frameworks, if that makes sense, or to get to those particular defined goal areas. So yeah. that's more that's more realistic. Yeah. For right. For us. Yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of where I was going with that. It's like in order that sounds great to implement it, but it's so much work to to figure it out and what we're going to do and more planning and assessing and that you know it's like we're right now we're just trying to move forward with the basic ideas. Um, I mean, if it's electric charging stations, I don't know what the optimal number would be in a city. You know, that the staff would have to look at all the parking and figure out where. I mean, that that's like kind of putting us back behind forward progress it seems. right hmm. right creating more reasons to delay rather than to step out yeah but I agree with, available. Yeah. I agree with with you that mm -hmm. that it's as we go it's important once we kind of have more uh, we're on a roll with this we understand what we're doing and we, we even have more context of what we might want to do you know in the future yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I, I agree I think that this is the plan, and then we're going to need to create the implementation mm -hmm. of it. And in that, in doing that, we can benchmark a lot more of this. But I don't want to stop that forward momentum of getting this out mm -hmm. and getting started on it. <clears throat> so, were there any other questions or? comments on the outline so Robin um, part B of the discussion is the annual update to the Board of Commissioners and I confess I haven't had a chance to just go through all of the minutes from last year to see key points but I plan on doing that um, Yes, I 
I uh, did go through all of the minutes and I pulled out um, what I think were some key accomplishments from the committee, which I was just planning to read through. I don't have a visual for that, but I do have last year's report to the BOC that we can look at maybe first to just see uh, what that looked like last year. So it was the PowerPoint itself was um, pretty simple, but um, it was more so in, in what was said, I think. Um, Dory did a great job last year presenting to the board, and it led to a lot of conversation among um, the board about what was done in that previous year. So it just kind of started out with introducing the committee and when we meet, and um, gave a couple bullet points about recent work that had been done at that time, um, mainly establishing the sustainability coordinator position. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at that time, you know, we were mm -hmm. in the early stages of, of figuring out the actions and using the STAR framework, so there was a portion dedicated to talking about STAR and talking about the upcoming community engagement. Mm -hmm. And then talking about the staff engagement, about our sustainability staff team, um, internal sustainability staff team um, that meets once a month. Mm -hmm. And then that is the org chart. And I think that Paul had grayed out those um, members of the staff team. I think that's what he did there, was showing who is part of the staff team. Um, and then talking about the joint meeting that the sustainability committee had with the staff team, that, that would be upcoming at, at that time, it was upcoming. And then talking about um, how this input would be used for the sustainability plan And then talking about community engagement, I think this was like the proposed schedule that Paul had put together at that time. Um, talking about, um, you know, how to stay on track with the community engagement, the workshops, the survey specifically, and um, talking about what the committee had done already over the past year, the listening sessions via Zoom um, how, you know, there's the monthly meeting, which is another opportunity for engagement itself, and the events, the Drive Electric event, an Arbor Day event that had taken place that year. And I'm just talking more about when the workshops were estimated to take place. And then lastly, um, they, you know, took the opportunity you all uh, took the opportunity to tell the board what your recommendations were. So talking about the community engagement, mainly the workshops, the sustainability plan, um, that the intention is to um, review it with them before getting to the final draft, which is still kind of the recommendation there, mm -hmm. and to ensure that um, the committee was involved in comp plan and strategic planning processes, um, which has also you know, taken place. So that was last year's presentation to just mm -hmm. give you know, some inspiration. Um, but I'm going to grab my notes about some of this past year's accomplishments. Feel free to stop me at any point in time. This might be a little bit long-winded. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a graphic to show, but at the next meeting, I'll have a draft presentation that we can review. So just kind of starting in the order of the year. Um, in early January, again, we had that meeting with Sustainability Committee and the internal sustainability staff team where you all talked about 
the actions for the sustainability plan. Okay, can I interrupt you? I thought that was really great and super worthwhile. And I, how you have things we would like to do, I think it would be really good if we met with them again because it, it's helpful to hear what they're thinking about you know, what they're planning on doing and what they're dreaming of doing in terms of s implementing this to, mm -hmm. for us to have ideas about what the staff is up to. And I remember vividly, you know, talking about how to put trees and things down at the docks and this innovative way. And those are things I think we need to hear from the staff and get to really know who's engaged. So I would say that's, to me, very important. Okay, so um, a recommendation, potential recommendation, another meeting with the sustainability staff team to kind of talk about um, implementation of the sustainability plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yes, I took note of that. Um, this, oh, Perhaps sorry. where they're at with um, integration of the sustainability plan and the comprehensive that's being worked on? Um, yes, I can answer that, actually. So the uh, strategic plan has uh, been completed. It was adopted by commission very recently. And you can access that on the Connect Tarpon page for the strategic plan. And I can email that out. Um, make a note to email that out. And I think you all will be um, very happy with it. It definitely has sustainability woven through all of the strategic goals. Mm -hmm. You know, it explicitly talks about the sustainability plan. It talks about, you know, climate and energy in the strategic plan. Um, it talks about smart growth and planning. So a lot of the elements tie in well with the sustainability plan um, because, you know, we worked with planning and zoning. So I think they did a great job of integrating sustainability in there. Um, the comprehensive plan is still in the works. Um, they don't have an outline yet to share. So there's still lots of opportunity there for engagement, but they... Um, our planning team definitely knows that um, we would like to integrate sustainability with that plan. So um, they are working with me to make sure that, you know, they have what they need to do that. So the strategic plan is complete or just the outline is complete? Um, so the strategic plan, it is my understanding, it is complete. It was adopted it was by commission okay. recently. Uh, I don't know the exact date, but I think it was uh -huh. December that it was adopted. Uh, but I'll send that out. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. <coughs> Um, so, moving on here, next, um, the committee did discuss project suggestions for ARPA funding. Mm -hmm. um, you all attended two comprehensive plan workshops. One was in February, it was for all city advisory committees, if you all rem mm -hmm. remember that. And the other was Caroline uh, Landford, our principal planner, came here and spoke with you all directly and gave you the exercise for the comprehensive plan, and that took place later on in June. We developed a logo, mm -hmm. uh, determined the name of the sustainability plan, and worked on the flyers for public engagement, um, supported participation in the Reduce Your Use campaign, if you all remember that one, um, aided in planning for the three public workshops and sustainability survey, to obtain feedback for the sustainability plan. And uh, we could share just the, you know, basic info on that, that we had 19 participants to the workshops and 170 responses to the survey. Um, we had the article published in the Beacon newspaper about those community engagement initiatives and new uh, sustainability coordinator position. 
we reviewed the feedback from the workshops to help with setting priorities for the sustainability plan actions. And that is something we could also include. I'm sorry, excuse sure. me. Just um, a question about publications. When we get something that's published, is that um, do the journalists come to the city? Or are we reaching out to them to give some sort of public service notice on what's going on? In, like in general, when we just in have general, a just for future um, opportunities. I think there are different ways to go about it. And in this case, uh, what I did was reached out to contact that um, was recommended to me by staff members in, at the Beacon, and we told them about you know what we were working on, and they wanted to do an article on it. But um, like Tarpon Arts, I think they actually will like pay for mm -hmm. advertisements in the Beacon and other newspapers. Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on what you're trying content. to do. Yeah, the mm -hmm. content. Okay, thank Typically, you. Typically, one puts out press releases, mm -hmm. and if you know press release about a new p person on the staff or an event or something that happens and then those get sent out because the people especially on a staff like the beacon they're so small they can't be out looking mm -hmm. and they usually request press releases mm -hmm. yes i think that's something that um they did like for the whitcomb bayou workshops and, and for some other you know, city events, they definitely do that as well. Were there any other comments so far? Okay. Um, so we have heard presentations from various staff members and guest speakers, including our economic development director, Karen Lemons, um, our planner, Caroline Lanford, um, Thomas Kiger, Assistant Public Services Director on the Greenhouse Gas Inventory Technical Report, uh, Natalie Gass from the City of Dunedin, and Julia Herbst from Florida Solar United Neighbors, and also uh, two presentations from Whitcomb Bayou, um, our CADIS team. Mm -hmm. So several presentations this year. Um, you all reviewed the proposed sustainability budget. Um, you were actively involved in the Whitcomb Bayou project and proposed alternatives. We discussed the smoking ban ordinance, um, discussed ideas for the city's sustainability website and future outreach, adopted rules of procedure for the committee, reviewed the 2019 greenhouse gas technical report supported the Florida Sun Solar Co-op, condensed the actions list for the sustainability plan, and discussed potential events to participate in and potential future community partners. Mm -hmm. So I would, there's, there's different ways we can break all that down by, you know, engagement and um, different types of, you know, community engagement, the greenhouse gas inventory, you know, there's multiple different ways we can group those things. But I think what I wanted to know is what were your um, key items that you wanted to include it in this report? So one thing, um, I remember I didn't go to the meeting for this, but I did go with Dory when she presented it the year before. And what was effective was having images and bullet points. So one of the things that you've mentioned was that we had a lot of people here who came to get our feedback. And it may be for an image to have a montage of all these people, if you can, I mean, most of them are staff people, and you know, to show how many people have come to seek either our input or to inform us so we could make the plan. I, I think that would be a good visual and a good accomplishment for the committee. And an acknowledgement 
of just how important we are. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that there's images of all of those um, encounters, but it's a but you could put nice idea. just pictures of you know the, the, the conversations, the exchanges, you know, of ideas and yeah. the stimulating. Uh, brain juices that were <laughs> being mixed up here. That's yeah, I'll, great. I'll definitely see what I can do I there. I like that <laughs> brain juices being mixed up. That's a good recipe for mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you have something? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I just wanted to respond to Robin's at, uh, question about what we want to emphasize, and I think that it's really important the, um, the community workshops were mm -hmm. completed, Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the greenhouse gas report hmm. is important to, to highlight. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like you mentioned already, all of the speakers mm -hmm. being able to demonstrate that. I think that engagement and all of the speakers, um, all of the, you know, it just shows we're not existing in a silo. Yeah, that yeah. we're really communicating with the staff effectively, with special projects like the Wickham Bayou, and with the community. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Yeah, I think I, I hear Car what Carol's saying. You know, it's a, it's very important to for everyone to know that this has been a tremendous collaborative mm -hmm. effort for everyone. And uh, the city has come to us. They've presented to us. We've had outside. We've had um, Natalie coming, Natalie Gass from um, the city of Dunedin. And so this mm -hmm. is not something that's popping up out of a vacuum. So I think that that's a really important point. And I really liked, um, you know, we had 117 responses that at one time was kind of um, not seen as a big accomplishment. but when that was put into context about the percentage of people that responded mm -hmm. to the tarpon survey versus the the um, sustainability survey that this that Pinellas County did, mm -hmm. it was substantial. Yeah. yeah, you know. So I think that that's something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. The way I'm looking, the way that I'm feeling this happening is that it's a celebration of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. Um, we aren't there yet, but there's been a lot of forward motion that really needs to be accented, and that's kind of the emphasis, collaboration and accomplishment that we're celebrating um, progress that is substantial because everybody's in, in the, the actual sustainability plan is outlined and is in progress now which couldn't have happened if we didn't have all the in-between steps. And that's pretty much what 2022 was all about, was because the first part of um, the committee was really the groundwork that you were setting and that we were all helping, but we were really digging trenches <laughs> to start, you know, trying to figure out what are we doing here? That's why I ask that we kind of have a, an opportunity to um, review the role of the Sustainability Committee because mm -hmm. our work isn't done yet, mm -hmm. but it's good to review the initial call to service mm -hmm. and what that was all about and where we're at today. I think another item that's really important and I think it's good for the commissioners to know is that a great deal of our accomplishment this year would not have been accomplished unless we had you. That their investment in mm -hmm. you is staff, a major staff person that's connected just with this um, area um, made a huge difference. And I think that that mm -hmm. should be in the report so they know that the money invested was good and that why not give more? Agreed. Um, so I wanted to echo 
that I think we should have updates about the staff outreach and the community outreach. Um, and also, I definitely think we should highlight the outline of the plan that needs mm -hmm. to be in there. That, hey, we have a very, like, a first small snippet and a complete outline, and we're actively working on it. Um, also, that logo, we got to include that, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Robin is busily writing all these things down. You got it all? Yeah, and <coughs> I'll rewatch the meeting anyway, but um, just writing down the main main things. Um, <clears throat> and you'll do the presentation, correct? I understand that is Good. happening, <laughs> and I will <laughs> prepare myself. And I'll be there in the audience you'll and support. Great. You will do Hopefully fantastic. we get some some support I'm, here. I'm sure you yeah. <laughs> We'll all come. Do we have a date for which meeting it will be? Not yet, but um, it will likely be March. It, it has to be before March 31st, according to our resolution. So okay. it'll be, we're kind of set for some time in March. And then reviewing the presentation, which we can talk about during items for next meeting agenda, but we'll review it next meeting as well. Kind of how it what I put together based on this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, I think um, definitely got some really good feedback on what we have accomplished and main things we want to highlight. But then also um, looking at, I think the next part would be recommendations to VOC, so going forward. So obviously it's you know completing the sustainability plan, mm -hmm. but I'd be curious to hear your other recommendations to the VOC. This is kind of your opportunity to talk to them directly and kind of tell them what, you know, your recommendations are. Well, I think um, one request we would want is to be able to engage with them on the draft at some point. So getting on their calendar to be able to do that and to walk them through mm -hmm. and, and seek their feedback. And the staff, as I had said mm -hmm. earlier. Do we need to talk about money? Like, do you need more money? Like, to go to conferences or, I mean, the more you can go to conferences, the more the city and our accomplishments is gets visibility, which I think is a good thing. Um. That definitely, that recommendation, I think, would be good for, like, when we get around to the annual budget planning in the next couple months. Um, but, I mean, you could have as a recommendation, you know, like, I don't know the best way to phrase it. We can work on it, but, like, allocate more mm -hmm. capital dollars to sustainability or not even necessarily capital dollars, but whatever you, or support your recommendation more, is. Um, local, regional, uh, and statewide visibility for the sustainability of uh, the sustainability accomplishments of Tarpon. So right. if we if we have that, then the money would come along. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, to me, it's more important to engage with the people in the town. You know, mm -hmm. to really pull. In, and I just don't know how the BOC would be part of that, but um, that's so primary because a lot of the points that were in the plan were mentioning that the city is doing this and that we're going to try to um, initiate more action in the public. So this was kind of a theme. At least that's what I saw when I read through the outline. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's got to be something, and I haven't haven't quite figured that out. But um, you know, we're completing the plan. We want to engage them in going through the draft and explaining it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the, if the public isn't participating or they they haven't been pulled or drawn or 
tempted into this process. I, that's where I would like to see allocation is, is any initiatives to try to, um, try to get our citizenry engaged so that we have people here at the meeting and that we have people trying to find out what they could do to connect with what the city is doing. I mean, there are so many people that are regionally networking. I mean, I, I, I hear about it and I read about it. I assume that there's regional opportunities. So mm -hmm. if we can, I mean, it's everything has to be local in order for it to become global. I mean, that's been a kind of a theme mm -hmm. for my whole lifetime. Well, you know, it's act locally, think globally, or the other way around, but mm -hmm. it, right now, localization not that we're in a you know a little fish tank but localization is so important because mm -hmm. we're looking at the fallout from a lot of a lot of systems collapsing in reality we're looking at that retailers are looking at it the transportation of goods is an issue there's there's a lot of issues but we, if we can connect and inspire people right in our hometown, that's where the yeast starts to bubble. So in the minutes from last meeting, it said that we were going to discuss today um, partners or something in the community. So that can be one of the things we're going to do. That is exactly what you're saying, that we can find community. There was something not using the word partners, but so people to engage with. And we were asked to write five things down that could be those. And I think that that, what Denise is saying, is a really good goal to add, that we want to invite um, I can't remember what the name, what wasn't partners, it was something else, to um, engage with us. And so they, if they agreed, mm -hmm. would come to the meetings and they could bring people, right, with them to grow, just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me see what what it was said it was but we're minutes. talking about recommendations to the boc mm -hmm. like what we want them to help us with oh i see that's what we're looking at right yeah, now that's what oh, i'm sorry focused on at the moment i was just thinking about what our initiative so this is just what we want the boc to do mm -hmm. um, okay or we want them to give us permission to do. We want yeah. them right. to. Right. Have well, them support. that may be because I don't know if it's in our charter that we can actually partner with people or. I don't. I don't think we need permission for that. No. We're not actually partnering necessarily, right? Did we decide yeah. we're right. engaging using the community right. resources? It would, or yeah, it would be. Yeah. You know, the city would be partnering. So. Right depending on the context that might need to go for its own BOC approval, you know, depending on the situation. Yeah, it's in a recommendation for community partners to engage with. That's was in the minutes last mm -hmm. time. And I think we had made a comment not to use yeah. partners because the partnership mm -hmm. assumes a, right. a, 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 a the agreement. Contractual. Right, 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 right. Contractual. right. Um, yeah. And so resources. Right. Resources. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. what it's community. Resources. I knew there was a thing like that. Right. Yes, that was in the last meeting. Um, Denise and I did meet ahead of this meeting and mm -hmm. um, decided to push that to the February meeting to oh, give more okay. time for this discussion, which I thought would take a lot longer, mm -hmm. <laughs> but hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, but yes, we will be discussing that uh, in the February meeting in, in depth. I have that on my sheet I'm going to give you. Okay, great. Yes, so um, yeah, before the next meeting, I'll you know reach out and remind about the bringing the top five suggestions for the community resources. But um, like Dory said, you know, this is kind of your section to give your recommendations to the BOC for what 
not only, you know, what you think they should prioritize, but also like getting permission in a sense for notifying them what it is that you all intend to work on how, in the next year. How about, um, we know that there's going to be a new city manager, right? There's so can we request then that part of the qualifications for the new city manager is that they are versed in sustainability? Um, I will have to check in with Paul on that. I'm really not sure what the status on that is, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll check in with him. Because that would be a real benefit. Robin, as a coordinator and, and someone who is connected to um, other coordinators and managers in, of sustainability regionally, what would you say you're seeing hmm. in terms of, of how their committees are interacting or recommend, making recommendations? I mean, we're kind of at a critical point where the plan hasn't been written. Last year, our biggest, you, you were the biggest answer to our wish list. Mm -hmm. You know, you were at the top of the wish list. So it's, it's hard to um, say, okay, what now? <laughs> we, we, we asked and we received, so what can we get this year? You know, and I don't want it to appear that way, but we want to be really... We want to keep growing this. We want to keep growing and, and at, the same, at the same rate because I feel like we're behind. So if, I mean, I, what I would like to see maybe for a recommendation is an understanding that our next phase is implementation and there are going to be costs associated with implementing some of these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a budget request now, but just flagging that come budget season based on Keep it the mind. initial analysis of implementation, mm -hmm. there may be a request to right. complete whatever plan or what, you know what I mean, we, we, we think is of highest and best use of. Mm -hmm. yep. We'll have to have allocation to the things that are necessary with costs associated, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's awesome. True. But we, I think that yes. the engaging with the with the board, like with the update with the BOC, emphasizing that they're welcome to look and engage in this plan because we've been working on it. So it's it's not like bringing someone in at the 11th hour and then they go, well, I don't like this, but maybe this should be like this. You know, that it, it that they're welcome to participate as we go along, but this isn't like, this isn't like slicing and dicing what we've done. This is our baseline. Mm -hmm. And we, we want, you know, I think respect for that baseline is important, mm -hmm. but also as Dory said, how we can, well, it's engage the community, as you said, but also, you know, what Dory just said. I think that all those, all those parts. And I really don't, I don't know how the BOC would be involved with um, um, creating an environment for more engagement. I mean, we've seen that they get plenty of engagement, almost probably more attention than they would want. And I'm, you know, I really crave that we get that much excitement and activity at our meetings. So maybe, maybe they have some thoughts on, on um, that, but I don't necessarily want controversies, but I would love to mm -hmm. have people with, um, you know, the desire to implement sustainability more in their own backyards mm. be part of what we're doing so that it's a patchwork of sustainability throughout the whole city. And this is mostly a new commission and mayor, correct, mm. that mm -hmm. we'll be presenting to. So it's almost, um, I don't know how, how much of the previous annual reports and what we've been doing, the current Board of Commissioners is aware of. 
a good point from the beginning oh, because this is, is uh, we have one returning one current member on the commission right now well, no, he'll be and gone. He'll be gone by March, and then right? Because he turns out, so right. then there's a brand new one. But then oh, we have a whole but they won't be sworn in until April, right? Yeah, but basically right. they're. But, the, but we'll have a whole new uh, yeah. slate, basically, yeah. other than Amendment. the mayor who was commissioner at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you're mm -hmm. almost re-educating. Yeah. So we need a recap. Entire, like uh, an mm -hmm. entire group of people. I'm sure they're aware that we exist. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope, um, but you're almost educating them that we started at we started with nothing. When did we start? Do you remember? 2019. In 2019. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting mm -hmm. timeline. So I think right. that would be a great thing to say is that mm -hmm. 2019, 2021, 22, 23. We're coming up on our fourth year, mm -hmm. and how you know at maybe ask them how they want to engage with us or how we can keep them mm -hmm. up to date with what we're doing. Of course, they can watch the meetings and read the minutes and all that or whatever, but um, I think that's a really good point. Would it be worthwhile to go back to the first um, report, Dory, that you gave to the BOC with mm -hmm. like a key point in the first, like just a even a five minute little recap when you go to speak with them that yeah. says during, the, you know, this is this is what we accomplished during our first year our second year, thir mm -hmm. third year, mm -hmm. and so you're almost kind of doing a little bit of a recap, but mostly what we've done during this, because now you're doing mm -hmm. an annual report, right. but you're giving an annual report to a group of people who doesn't know that we've had three other, or two other yeah, annual absolutely. reports. But those That's meetings really were recorded, good. so I mean, those they could actually they watch, mm -hmm. watch Dory just give, you know, a 10 minute, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. That's so really good. Just a and thought. then, you know. Do an in-person one. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could provide those beforehand so they can take a look at it. That way, when we go to update it, but too. And his backup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it won't be time taken away from presenting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. But it might be good just at the very beginning, just like as a recap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what sustainability is, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is what we're trying to accomplish in the city. Mm -hmm. We were established four four years ago mm -hmm. for this reason, mm -hmm. right? Why we were established and why we have a sustainability coordinator right now, and mm -hmm. I think those are important things to bring up to a group of people who did not mm -hmm. put this committee together mm -hmm. or you know establish it. Do you have the presentation from twenty twenty one? You obviously have the twenty two. I've got the twenty one. If you um, want me to send I, it to you. I have it in general. Um, I think it might be on the website. I can see real quick. I know we have one of them on the website, or I thought we did. Oh, That's where we started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You, you are the uh, queen of order on your computer. Mm -hmm. I, that is so enviable <laughs> that you've got these all of that at your fingertips. I'm really ADHD, so I need well, strategy I to be organized. <laughs> Rub elbows with me and get a little bit of that. <laughs> That's excellent. I even have 2020s. Mm -hmm. This one is 2020. So 2021. Yeah, that wouldn't be too hard without without a presenter for them to at least go through mm -hmm. and get a little bit of a background That's a great on, idea. The slides, yeah. Yeah. on the history here. Right. Um, 2020 is on our website, so I pulled it up, but 2021 is not currently on our website. Although we can definitely share those in the backup and like you said, do kind of a recap of the last few years to the board. But I think in 2020, this is, that gave a, this is from 2020. I think you all gave a lot of background yeah. on, you know, what is sea level rise, what is sustainability, what is heat index. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was very. This one was pretty thorough. And did we mention, you know, something that we discussed at the beginning of our meetings was sustainability and and. Uh, 
um, adaptation, resiliency, defining those terms because they're kind of used interchangeably, but there's definitely nuances to mm -hmm. what they apply, how they are applied. Um, I think I th it wouldn't hurt to, to give them that background. I think one thing that will help too is figuring out a um, estimated uh, time frame for the presentation. Um, oh. Kind of, I will figure that out. What it was last year, the year before, to help us figure out like how much time. It our was fifteen minutes, be. including their questions, which was about five of it. So I ha I, pre okay. I prepared ten minutes worth of speaking, which is goes by like mm -hmm. nothing. You were really on it when you did it. Okay. Um, I have a, oh, sorry. Can, yep. can I go to something else, or is, do you want to finish this? Um, I did want to add one other thing, which kind of ties in okay. with the next item w about role. Um, that no, I'm going to talk about the presentation for a second. Okay. I, I, okay, so the way in which sustainability in the staff is structured is there you and then throughout the whole staff there are people so it's a weird sort of department in some way because it's not like just one you and your staff it's you and people throughout the and city Robin works under someone yeah, under Paul well, you under like Paul. Under Paul. Smith. yeah so my question is given that we're moving pretty quickly once this plan's done to implementation. Does that model work for that? Or are you going to need someone working directly with you, uh, support staff or somebody else? Um, and if that's the case, then there's money issues and budget thing. But it's, it's a, I remember when Paul talked about this, about, you know, that we just pull from the rest of the staff. But it seems to be working. And there's so also I'm, interns available. I'm just wondering how that works and if you foresee the need to request somebody else. Um, I think right now um, there has not been, you know, expressed that there is intention to get another sustain like full-time sustainability staff member. Um, I have been able to have the sustainability intern over the summer and we're about to bring on another so part-time sustainability want to intern. That too in yeah, report. that would be a good thing to mention. Uh -huh. um, and that has been helpful and I'm looking forward to that. And um, right with the sustainability staff team, it's um, it's almost like the idea isn't such that there's one department for sustainability, but rather that sustainability is integrated mm -hmm. throughout the departments. Mm -hmm. And I think that model was kind of, you know, there are a couple other cities that do that too, like Largo, they have one uh, designated sustainability staff person, but an internal sustainability staff team. Mm -hmm. So that's done in a couple other cities. Um, so. I do, I do think it's a good structure. Um, I think um, probably at this, not at this time, but you know, if the need presents itself, then that could be a recommendation. Okay. But I definitely appreciate having the help of the sustainability interns and looking forward to having another one on board very soon. Do they get paid? They do, yes. Yeah. And uh, we also had two high school interns recently. I know we mentioned that at a, another meeting. So we've had quite a few interns helping with That's sustainability great. over the last year. Um, so, Robin, do you have everything from us that you need to come up with a presentation yes I do believe I do I'll definitely rewatch this portion of the meeting make sure I capture everything get it in a presentation format and we can 
review that at the next meeting. Um, but I did have one thought I just wanted to add as well that in the section of, um, I have to pull it back up. Okay. So in addition, it's kind of an exchange where the committee is giving your recommendations to the BOC, but also very importantly, the BOC is going to be able to communicate to you all what their priority topics are. Mm -hmm. And this will be, you know, we can talk about this in more depth in our next item about role of the committee, but that's a big part of the um, resolution of the committee is to mm -hmm. kind of look at those topics of importance to the board and prioritize those topics. So I think this is also an opportunity to kind of ask the board what their priorities are for sustainability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As well. Are you moving into that now? We had um, on 4C the role of the sustainability committee. We're not there yet, are we? Oh, we're not there yet, but it, this one is like it ties into both, you know. Like the last little bit of the. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's any other comments for me on this item. Do, do we have priorities from former boards of what their priorities were? Do we? I will look into that. I mean, they each kind of gave what they wanted to see, um, and I took those notes, and then I know I presented them at our next meeting, so it would have been like the April meeting of this year and the April meeting the year before. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I think it was kind of informal, like, you know, I remember one was look into brick roads and, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of comments that were a little bit more generalized. I don't know, maybe one recommendation would be to ask for like a more formal list of priority topics and like allow the board to, you know, give that at a later date or if we want to just proceed with whatever they say verbally at the meeting. That's kind of another thing to think about as mm -hmm. well. I remember last year one of the comments was um, wanting to see us participate in the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And the comp plan. And the thing, comments like look into brick roads is more of an implementation period. It's not something we're going to put in the plan because the plan's more general. That would be something, you know, how we'll implement, you know, maybe roads that water can seep into the ground. Right. And there's definitely more to that point that's just right. all that I remember at this time yeah there's more context there Dory. Yeah. can we provide them the draft mm -hmm. of our the 50 items just so they can get an idea of like that's a good that's this a is really what we're talking idea. about like we're not talking about beautification right mm -hmm which they may have in their head just because they have no mm -hmm. form of reference because they haven't, like the new you know folks may not have engaged with us yet. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea for a frame of reference mm -hmm. to kind of, so that they'll have a snapshot of where we are mm -hmm. and not, you know, reinvent the wheel or something that would be a, a tangent, you know, tangential. And that we're doing a plan and not the specific things to implement, not yet. So it was recommended to me uh, not to bring to the board until we felt like very confident in what we were presenting. So I would ask that, you know, do, do you all feel like it's mm -hmm. now is the time like you're, you're confident with this actions list to bring forward to the board? Because once we do that, it will kind of face, mm -hmm. it will kind of open the door to potentially, a, you know, a lot of um, commentary which is inevitable and that's fine but you know do you all feel ready to kind of have that conversation or would you like to wait until there's a draft in place to kind of give more framework around those actions when we present them to the board do do we know chair do we know when the draft is going to be ready i mean what's because that might be something to say you know we're we're this close to having a draft right robin i forget the timeline for that i have that but we're, that has we're probably not we we can reference that we're presenting the draft or that the draft will be ready by a certain date but to my understanding 
what we're doing in March is just catching them up, up to the history to, yeah. of what we've accomplished since we were first instituted. Mm -hmm. And then um, what, you know, just uh, highlight some of the, recap some of the activities that we've done in the last two years and that the sustainability plan has been pared down or pared down from a huge list of, of wishes, you know, as we sorted through the STAR framework to 50 achievable um, objectives mm -hmm. and action steps. But that it hasn't been written yet. It's, um, Robin just did, you know, she just presented to us the outline right. tonight. Right, so it's a lot of work. It's going to be filled in. She's going to have some assistance, hopefully, with um, an intern coming on that he was possibly going to be at this meeting but didn't make it. So what does the um, framework or what does the um, outline, kind of more of a... Um, definite outline look like it's going to be ready to be approved. I don't think that we're going to be showing them that no, this, this no, time at no, all. I think you're right. It's well, way this is, would this be more presenting like a baseline to them of saying here's our history and we have we 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 have 50 achievable goals and when this framework is developed then, you know, we'll well, to my understanding, we just have an obligation. It's part of the resolution to present so it's just to them an just to give them a, you know, an, a report an annual report of what we've been doing in the last year Fair enough. since mm -hmm. last time was presented. I think it may be premature to give them the 50. Well, I think so too. I think so. Because I, I, I think that, again, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot, but I, I don't necessarily know. We might want to I don't know that this is that. the focus of the annual meeting yeah. right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is more of the focus of where we're going with it. And when we come up with a draft... Mm -hmm. then it's a working draft that they're... Um, they can engage with. Correct, yeah. correct. And, and not because I think that they're going to look at this and say, well, we don't want any of this, but I think that that's not the purpose of the annual yeah. report. I Thanks agree. for that course correction. <laughs> and there's 10 minutes. Yeah. Five I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. enough time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, even if this was in their backup, I think that as somebody's reading it without being mm -hmm. able to address it, well, it's or just, taking all it's your time. just yeah. premature. It's premature. Because we're still in the foundation, mm -hmm. setting the foundation at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think it does present a good opportunity to kind of make them aware of it. And then, you know, according to our timeline, shortly thereafter, we will have our draft that we'll be presenting. So it's kind of a good timing in the sense that it'll be March and we'll be telling them we're going to bring this plan forward. And then in the next couple months, they'll actually see it. So mm -hmm. there will be kind of it will be introducing them to the idea of Time the plan line. and that mm -hmm. it's coming very soon. And then when they see it, I think they'll be a little more receptive to it. That so that is something to consider for the future discussions, um, how to anticipate interacting when the plan is unveiled, you know, so that we can be part of that, so that we can engage with them as we're... Um, explaining it point by point or hopefully it might be another presentation another it, presentation it might be it can there be a workshop does the commission do workshops where um, we can have that or does it need to be at the commission meeting i am not sure the best format for that but um yeah i will ask our our staff about what their recommendations are to how to present that in the best way Dory? Um, maybe a good example would be how they presented the strategic plan. Mm. Since they just did that, they just adopted a plan, how did they go about adopting that? Mm -hmm. and that may be good, some good Thank feedback you. to get from them. Like, how do y'all want to hear from us? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because I prefer a workshop where we can talk back and forth right. and it's not mm -hmm. so rigid like a commission yeah. meeting. But I don't know. I haven't been following along, so I don't know if they've been having workshop meetings. 
So when the plan I know is that's ready, a thing. That's but <laughs> no, I like that we just ask them what, what would work best for them mm -hmm. when the time comes mm -hmm. yeah. so we can prepare. Right, and I will talk to you know, our planning and zoning about also what their recommendation is as well. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that anyone has to add to this discussion about the annual update to the Board of Commissioners? Because we're kind of getting short of time at this point. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to touch on the role of the Sustainability <laughs> Committee. Um, in the next 10 minutes based on um, our transitioning role as the plan becomes more um, a living document. I wanted to add, I think there might have been some weird highlighting in the version I sent to you. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that. I, I really, I have no idea what that was about. I thought, what is redacted I, here? <laughs> I don't remember doing that. I have no idea. I looked at it and I was like, I don't These are the CIA even remember highlighting this. <laughs> yeah, so just please, that, that had no meaning at all. So please don't <laughs> look into that. And I put the clean version up here. So yeah, that was strange. Um, so I am not sure, you know, the best way to go through it. Um, and, you know, given time, we could kind of go through it the best we can tonight. And maybe if we need to, we can discuss more at the following meeting as well. But just kind of going, I think, Denise, like you said, you wanted to revisit the role of the committee and the resolution would be that defining framework for the committee and how it is intended to function. So we, we might skip down to just section five, the duties of the Sustainability Advisory Committee. And I, I looked everywhere. Dory might remember we had, when we signed on to the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition, there was just a really tiny line that said that there needed to be a committee and that's what drove this. Am I imagining that? No, you're right. But I couldn't find the paper. I know I have had it, and I, you know, I don't have your organization on those. But there was, it was just a, it was a suggestion, or it was part of the implement, part of being coming part of the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition that mandated that we have an, a citizens advisory committee, and that's what enabled us to move mm -hmm. into requesting that we officially, officially create a sustainability committee of volunteers mm -hmm. from the city. And then um, this was written by the, the city attorney. Um, I think actually Paul wrote this and um, the city okay. attorney reviewed it. Oh, thank you. And it was a collaborative effort, I think, with Paul and some other staff members. Um, but kind of the comment that I made in the previous item um, is written here, you know, to serve at the direction of the Board of Commissioners uh, to review and make recommendations um, to same regarding city sustainability and resiliency. So this kind of shows the subject areas mm -hmm. that um, the Board of Commissioners indicated that they wanted the committee to focus on and I mean, as you can see, it is quite broad as sustainability is, it kind of covers, you know, everything. And so I think that's also why it is important to ask the board where their priorities are, just since, you know, looking at all of these areas could be potentially overwhelming, kind of in the sense of focusing on a couple. But I'll zoom in here for everyone. And then specifically completing the sustainability plan, which we are working on now. Um, and then the, you know, as part A just talks about all of the various, some of the various areas like energy efficiency, water conservation, reducing waste, um, protecting sensitive areas, greenhouse gas emissions, environmentally responsible practices, products and technologies, 
and then potential for new green businesses and jobs. Mm -hmm. And then providing information for sustainable practices. So that's kind of what we've been talking about more lately. Um, compiling and updating our sustainability activities to show a current status of progress. So that's kind of what we'll be accomplishing through the annual report and then also through the sustainability plan, like where we talk about progress and do the annual updates. Mm -hmm. And then here again that the Board of Commissioners City Manager can also um, place items on an agenda for discussion in addition to the committee members, mm -hmm. which I don't think has been done to date. Mm -hmm. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it could happen. And then performing any other duties and assignments as requested by board of commissioners or city manager. So um, I think one of my hopes for this update and just in general engaging with the board of commissioners is um, having them remember that you all are here and, you know, kind of actively engage and actively, you know, reach out with things that they're interested in and kind of getting that engagement with the board of commissioners. So I think that would be a great thing to come out of the presentation is reminding them that you all focus on these areas. So if they have an interest in one of those areas then they can, you know, give those ideas here and we can explore them and provide those recommendations. Good. So also I think the um, not this the intro also gives some additional information about at least you know, priorities, um, kind of indicating that when the committee was formed, it was to achieve social environmental financial vitality, kind of tying back to the definition of sustainability, um, looking in terms of the economic benefits to sustainability, like energy efficiency, the tourism economy, the benefits for that from cleaner coastlines and waterways, overall community economic health, property value and business vitality, and encouraging growth of green jobs and adoption of sustainable practices by existing businesses. Um, looking at the use of methods, systems, and materials that are harmonious with land, water, energy, natural resources, natural cycles. So I think even just looking at this kind of gives some good ideas for potentially some areas where we could lean into, like especially with the economic section and kind of engaging with businesses. Um, Board of Commissioners wishes to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase energy efficiency, conserve water, reduce waste, utilize environmentally responsible products and technologies. Reduce the impacts of changing climate, including sea level rise. Um, I don't want to read the whole thing verbatim, but um, I can if you'd like. And also reducing rising sea levels and climatic structure, um, stressors. Lead by example. I think that's a strong one. Lead by examples, by example as a green municipality and encourage sustainability as an integral part of future development for the city. Mm. And work cooperatively with leaders of nonprofit academic communities, private sector, federal government, state, regional entities, Pinellas County, local governments. That's kind of what um, you mentioned earlier, Carol, as well. Um, empower the residents, regardless of social demographics or economic means create a sustainability advisory committee. That's why they, you know, and then make recommendations to the city commission to advance the intent of this resolution. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of the overview, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. So what I hear from our chair is the 
question of once we get the plan complete, what's the role of this committee? And I think that that's a big question. And it seems like it should be maybe an agenda item mm -hmm. um, when we get to a certain point of, um, I mean, we're not staff people, so, you know, we're not doing that. But maybe, for example, the way the Wickham Bayou people came to us and we work with them, maybe we could work with the staff in terms of developing ways to implement. But I think that we need to come up with a plan and specifics about what the committee the is future. going to do after yeah. the plan is, gen is made, mm -hmm. finished, adopted, I guess is the correct word. Well, it never stops there because it's going to be, I hate to say it, but from the moment it's printed, it's, it's um, beginning to be outdated. <laughs> So we're always going to have opportunities to improve and mm -hmm. to make things, um, help things work more realistically, mm -hmm. you know, as we find out what isn't working. But we um, will always have, I'm sure, opportunity for input. But I think that that would be a good agenda item, mm -hmm. you know, is what our focus would be, Dory. Well, I think that earlier when you were saying that that I was leading when we did the hard part, I think that that's not correct. I think the next step is the implementation, mm -hmm. which is gonna be really hard because we're gonna be having to figure out like sequence of events and priorities of events and funding of events. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that your, your leadership is gonna be very important for, like to me, I, I see 23 us working through with staff, I think a lot more hand in hand in terms of the implementation and mm -hmm. what what needs to happen because that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Staff I'm, is okay. going to be really important. Mm -hmm. Definitely to partner with them. So I saw on there too. Um, it mentioned like gathering information in one way or another. I don't remember the exact phrasing, but like kind of collecting information on topics and presenting it to them. Um, and there's a lot of our action items that are information and education based. So maybe we can have a role in gathering some of that information that we want to highlight for staff in those items. Um, so we've got improving the plan, um, helping implement the items, you know, there'll probably be several projects going at once. Um, so that should be plenty for us. And, uh, I'm thinking I forgot that we, we haven't, they haven't really asked us to look up particular many things. They haven't had many requests of us. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, maybe reaching out to them more and being like, what do you want us to look into for you? Like we're here serving at your disposal, you know? Mm -hmm. That could be a good way to, to conclude, you know, is that we would love to, we'd love to hear from each of you what your mm -hmm. questions are and what your visions are for for how to utilize us yep. as a resource, you know, and we would be glad to um, help move the city forward with sustainability, but we need to know how we can make it relate to what they are doing or how we can integrate it with what they're doing on a larger scale. Thank you. Yeah. I think that it's true. Every maybe every step is um, is going to be um, interesting journey <laughs> to the future. <laughs> so, are we ready to look at the um, the agenda for the next meeting? Yeah, I um, I don't have anything to add. I don't know if anyone else had any. All right. Yes, I just gotta go over here. So we'll have a lot of follow up on our next agenda. Um, the BOC presentation. 
to be part of the follow-up. Mm -hmm. And um, where will we be with uh, the sustainability plan outline at that point? You said that there might be some more um, organization of it or a rearrangement, some of the points that we made, or will it be fleshed out a little bit? Do you think? So I was going to suggest um, kind of to help us stay on track in the next few months with the sustainability plan timeline, mm -hmm. um, kind of a standing agenda item okay. where I can pull up the timeline and we can review it um, before we uh, set the items for the next meeting agenda. And that might be able to help us um, kind of prioritize, stay on track with that timeline. I do have the timeline. I could show it now, but I know it was not a discussion item, and I don't want to get into a sunshine law. I mean, I could show it, I think, briefly if no discussion <laughs> takes place. Can you send it as backup for the next um, meeting? Yeah. Yes, I could definitely do that. Because if you yeah. bring it up and there's any discussion, we can't discuss it. Right, and so I did want, yes, I did want to have that you on the next agenda. You know how hard that would be for us. <laughs> yeah, and um, I was hoping to have that as an agenda item on the next meeting agenda to review the timeline, as put it in a new table format that I think is a little bit better to follow along with. Um, so but the next, the next stage is set to be the first draft and that is set to be two to three months from now. Quick. Okay, so first draft. we're in January. We'll be reviewing the first March draft or in April. February. Quick. I would be, March or April. March, okay. Hopefully March. Or I April. will aim for March. Okay, <laughs> I will so aim for March. April's like uh, on the long end if for some reason um, something next is delayed. Next agenda would be the BOC presentation and then th what we had shelved at the last meeting for lack of um, community resources. Yeah, the community resources. Mm -hmm. And come up with a list for the website. So we'd like to see. And I have a question about that. Am I allowed to mm -hmm. discuss it since it's not technically on the agenda? <laughs> um, is it. <clears throat> There were so many great um, resources that came out of the last meeting. Um, you mean in the meeting before the, last month? When um, uh, people had sent in mm -hmm. the the, uh, uh, the items, the list of uh, right. resource potential resources. Are we looking for in choosing our five top? Are we looking more for? links to to resources in a it's so hard there were 30, global 30 or global or local that was my because I know when I pre presented mine they were all local and then there were all these great global ones that came out and I was like oh how, I got five <laughs> that I was supposed to limit it to so is is there the world's your oyster choose global versus local or are we trying for the website to find the one. So why yeah. don't we bring a list of five of each, if that's possible? Okay. And then we can advocate for which ones. I mean, we might do hmm. a combination, I would think, but we could advocate for um, the large scale view down to the, you know, the local level. Okay, I'm confused see. at this point. So... Yeah. Okay, are you talking about these partners? Not resources? The, the are you talking about the list that we wanted to have on the website of resources like Correct. more right. things? About. So Correct. that's different from the five partner type that we, we want to engage with? I think with? we decided we couldn't really call the resources our partners because we need to have alignment and it needs to be something that gets approved by the city if we 
Yeah, if yeah, we I get are that. Calling per, you know, but, partners. Okay, so, so let me just, put this clear. I thought that what was being asked for was get a motion to extend the meeting. Motion to extend the meeting by five minutes. Second. Was, you know, we what need to vote. in favor? Oh, aye. Aye. aye, aye. What local groups does this committee want to engage with to get an engagement going? So that's different from what we did when I was here last when we talked about you know, what things on the website would provide information about mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. So those are two different things. They, so I'm, that's yeah. why I'm confused. I think there were some things <laughs> conflated. <laughs> okay. So because when I made that ginormous list, I started thinking about the St. Pete plan and all of the people that they had identified as, mm -hmm. like, people that would help them with the different things. Mm -hmm. So... That's why that list is so long. Hmm. But I think for the website, what we're looking for is like, if you're a community member and you're curious about sustainability, yeah. these are your like top five things to go check out to learn more. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. that's what I was looking for. Okay. Okay. Clarification on exactly whether we're looking for Thank a community. You. And what are we looking for? I thought what we requested with the five wasn't what you just said, but was for local people to actually engage or groups to engage that was another conversation as well conversation. okay so what are what are we supposed to get bring in our list both uh, the five resources for people to learn the most about sustainability oh. You know, it, yeah, yeah, it could be that. global, it could be... Okay, um, so that's completely... And wide. then we could, I think, maybe have another conversation another time about who we want to engage with okay. to learn more and so to invite was, and things like my that. My list yeah. is who we want to engage with locally to, you know... Okay, so now... That's great. You might want to save that for the future I, because I'm give it we to need her. to have, have... Okay, we will have a conversation about that. Okay, fine. Okay. Can Got I ask... It. a Question? Yes, of course. <laughs> for or a suggestion, also for another item for the next meeting. Um, did we ever f finish the conversation mm -hmm. about the website, or is that we need to finish that? Like that, this is part of it, right? Is the community mm -hmm. resources? So would the item be like continued discussion of website? We could frame it like that. Okay, because I, I want to be able to talk about what I was thinking about for the website too, since I Excellent. missed December's meeting. Okay. So in one minute, so <laughs> Chairman Eno. Yes. May I speak? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Um, so we're going to come up with five resources globally or locally that we suggest go onto the website for people to be engaged with everything that we're doing or to have a better understanding of what we're doing. Is that mm -hmm. correct? I think that that's what I'm hearing. Okay. And I think that that's the most practical use of the website resources. Okay. Thanks. And then I also wanted to suggest, I mean, if you all would like, we could have a discussion about the strategic plan, if you would like to go through that, just so that, you know, we're all on the same page and you see how it relates to the sustainability plan and how we can importantly tie the strategic plan into the sustainability plan. Will we have time with that, for that, with the BOC presentation information? I'm just asking. Um, I'll, I'll look at the, you know, time estimates. Okay. But um, we could have that as our last item, and if it needs to carry over, mm -hmm. we could do that. Make it and carry would you over highlight, March. like, what areas of the strategic plan we should look at that would be relevant? Yeah, I'll send it out. And I'll, to um, this. Prior to the meeting and the backup, I'll pull out the key pages. Mm -hmm. So are we, we set on our agenda items. Okay. Staff comments? Oh, yes. Another motion. Oh, you motion get to motion. extend the meeting another three minutes. I second it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Staff comments? Um, I do have a couple things. I will try to be brief. 
Um, so you all may have seen the flyer. That's for our Knowledge and Nibbles series. The first one is taking place very soon on February 2nd at 6 p.m. at the Heritage Museum. We're going to have Doris Heitzman and Melissa West from UF IFAS, Pinellas County Extension, and they'll be talking about Florida Friendly. Um, so if you could please spread the word in your networks and consider attending, I think it'll be a really great uh, lecture. So that kicks off the series. It's going to be once a month. We'll have a different guest speaker. Um, additionally, the city of Clearwater is hosting a free sustainability conference geared toward community members. Um, I believe it's February 4th coming up soon. I had sent that information as well in an email. So I think that will be a great event if you all are interested in that. And also, um, I was invited to give a presentation to the Tarpon Springs Rotary, and um, that went very well. Uh, that took place on January 12th, and it's on their Facebook if you'd like to look. And Karen Good. was there. <laughs> great. Yes. Um, so that's there all for two rotaries in Tarpon. Which rotary did you go to? It was just called the Tarpon Springs Rotary. Yeah, the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs, and then there's a Tarpon Springs Sunset. So the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs. The one that meets at Cypress it. Run. Correct, on Thursday. It's a Thursday noon meeting, so you can find That's her on Cypress the last Run. One. Okay, I know which one it is. It's confusing. Um, that's that all for it, me. And do we have any um, committee comments? I do. I want to congratulate our new officers and to say that um, I think that we will have a robust committee. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the support. You are the essence of this committee, all of you. Thank you. So it, it, we're agending this meeting at 8.06, and I everybody have a wonderful evening, and thanks for being here and volunteering your precious time. Ah, thank we you. We appreciate that. Bravo. Thank you.